Good day, hi and welcome. But first, hey, can you keep it down over there? Kinda. Yeah. All right. You been listening to me, Gazoo? He's not listening to me. All right. I give you the Nikon D100. Twenty years, almost twenty-one years, I've owned this camera. I've been wanting to make this video for a little while, and this camera has been such a workhorse. So many things I've done with it. It, uh, weddings and car shows and wildlife and a couple of models here and there. And, uh, I, uh, also, you know, like just carried this thing everywhere in the beginning stages. Shutter's good for 130,000 shots. I got well over 130,000 shots. Uh, on this camera for sure. When I first got it, it was kind of like you, shooting 700 photos in a day was kind of like, you know, when you first get these, you click, 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 you know. <laughs> it still does four frames a second, no more, no less, four frames a second. And it just sits there, click, 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 click. And it's, a, it's such an awesome camera. 6.1 effective megapixels. By today's standards, yeah, that's pretty anemic. I get that, but it still takes a pretty darn good shot for what it is. Uh, I've got the Nikkor 7, uh, 18 to 70 mil lens on there, which will give you a little bit of a preview of. Kind of just looks cooler like that. And uh, you can't take picture. You have a lens cap on. There you go. Well, not right now. Uh, but this camera, 20 years. You know, yes, it was expensive when I bought it. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I paid well over two grand for it, uh, everything all in. I probably had about $3,000 worth of equipment, give or take. I went through a few lenses, a few prime lenses. I ended up settling on the 70, uh, 18 to 70 mil and the 73 to 300 uh, with the macro feature. And that covers a lot of focal range, 18 millimeters out to 300 on just two lenses. Um, but I've always wanted to get myself a really nice 60 millimeter uh, uh, Nikkor, uh, portrait lens and maybe a 105 and definitely a really good 50 mil and then a really good not a fisheye lens but landscape maybe 24 or a 20 or you know once you get down below 20 you know you, you start getting fisheye and stuff like that which is cool but yeah but uh yeah so this this has been my Sports photography, it's been everything. And uh, now, mind you, uh, I didn't make a lot of money with this camera because I, I did never really pushed it to what it could, you know, uh, what I could do. But, you know, probably made five, six hundred dollars with it. At least you're doing weddings. Predominantly weddings is the things that paid. And, uh, you know, just, you know, mostly weddings for friends. And so like, you know, here's a hundred bucks, take our wedding photos. Um... Uh, done lots of Canada Day events, lots of, uh, you know, like the Remembrance Day, the rem uh, this year's Remembrance Day photos are still on this camera. Um, and uh, when I was taking the pictures, I started seeing a little error code, you know, it was start, uh, the shutter is getting a little bit tired and it starts to get jammed every now and then, maybe every, you know, few hundred pictures, it kind of doesn't shutter doesn't quite work as well as it did so it's starting to so show its age but still lots of life left on it still the original battery uh oh for anybody that's going to ask no this camera does not do video this camera was at an error when it was really kind of the purest of film going to digital right but with the purest mindset of we're going to build you a camera not a video recorder but a camera and uh, what I didn't realize when I bought this back then that I realize now was this was the beginning of the end. The whole beginning of an end of an era of cameras. Over a hundred years of a mirrored, shuttered camera, <clears throat> right? We went to digital. So we went from film to digital. And this at the time was about the third best camera you could get from Nikon. So they called it an intermediate pro camera. Tell you the truth, it was a pro camera. <laughs> you know, you, you, the, the amount of bells and whistles you could buy for this thing was, uh, you know, flashes and 
big battery banks and everything. But it was the end, beginning of the end of an era. At the time, its film uh, equivalent would have been the F-100. And the F-100 was still an outstanding film camera. I didn't own one. I always wanted one. And it was $1,600 for the film camera. And this thing was about $2,000 for just, just the body or $2,100, whatever it was. Uh, you can see a previous video that I did on that where I go through all my old receipts. And the thing is, is that the film camera at the time still took a sharper photo with all things given. You know, if you were to take the lens off of this and put it on your average film camera, it was a little bit sharper. But this was really, really good for its time. And... As small as the camera actually is, it's a, it's a beast by today's standards, but if you look at all the the uh, mirrorless cameras out there, yeah, this thing's a beast by today's standards, sure. But uh, this thing can take a photo in RAW the size of a billboard. So it is a commercial, uh, you know, it, it did do commercial photos, you know. Uh, I didn't do commercial photos with this one, but it was capable of it. And now when you look at, like, the, the Z9s and the Z8s, and you know, those are pretty crazy cameras uh, that Nikon makes. And maybe someday, uh, hopefully, I'd be able to own one of them too. But I still love the simplicity of this camera. I just wish it took better pictures or, you know, updated the sensor, you know, but leave everything else the same. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles like most cameras today, it only has five point autofocusing. But you know what? It's just, that's enough. It doesn't have video. But you, when you pick this thing up, you really don't care about that. You just want to take a really good picture. That's it. You get, it's fully manual or automatic. And, you know, it would be nice to have a camera this simple again, where it's like for the purist, you know, in the sense of, I just want to take pictures. I don't care about the video. I'll carry another camera. And this would be a really cool kind of camera to have updated. Can you imagine having a... 24 or 45 megapixel in something this simple. That would be really, really, really cool. You know, because the only thing you do when you have a camera like this is just worry about getting a good shot. You know, you're not sitting there programming for half an hour to see what you're going to get. Uh, you just got to just take a good shot. And I won't have any photos in this camera. How am I doing for time here? But, um, yeah, the... Um, you know, it still takes a good shot. It really does. Again, by today's comparison, yes, everything is much better. But boy, for 20 years, this thing has been, you know, working pretty, pretty good. But what was it the beginning of the end of? Well, we're all going mirrorless now. And in 10 years, there's probably not going to be a DL DLSR camera available. There's only a handful available now. Um... This was the beginning of the end of it because once we went digital, it was only a matter of time before we were going to do away with that big clunky shutter. You know, but that shutter gives you such charm, that clunk, clunk, gotta love it, right? But that said, we didn't know that we would be moving towards that. You know, like something that's worked so well for uh, over a hundred years, the, you know, the, the basic shutter, you know, look through a viewfinder, what you see in the lens is what you're going to get. And now we're at an era where, like I say, these kind of cameras are going to go away. Uh, they're not going to be available uh, new anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, no matter what form they are. So whether you're talking a D100 like this or a D850, the D850 is, is, is becoming a dinosaur, even if it's an, an extremely, extremely well-liked camera by all. But so was this at one point. This was an extremely well-liked camera by all. So, who knows? Will this thing last another 20 years on the original battery? I don't know. But it is almost time to retire it. But the thing is, is as we age with our cameras, and I'm 50 now. Trust me, I'm 50. <laughs> I can feel it every morning. Um, one of the things that we notice is that we want to keep going. But, you know, our bodies catch up to us, right? Well, it's like this old friend of mine here. You know, he wants to keep going, but, you know, he's getting tired too. But you think of all the good times, all the photos, all those memories, all those experiences that you have with a camera. 
it really becomes a human story, you know, even though it's a piece of magnesium with some plastic and <laughs> sensors, but it really does look into the soul of people. And uh, that I think is what's so special. And to have that companion for 20 years, uh, what could I say other than thank you Nikon for making such a cool camera. And uh, yeah, the D100. So if anybody's looking for one of these things used, the nice thing is, is you're not going to pay very much for them now if you can find one working. Um, I have no idea what the shutter's uh, count is on this thing. I can just tell you it's a lot. But I've kept good care of uh, this camera over the years. I just want to uh, have to wrap this up. But uh, kind of dark in here. Can't see where I'm at. So, But anyway, I I'll just leave it with this. Uh, who knows what the next 20 years, if I'll even be around in 50, I could be, it could be, you know, could be gone before that. But uh, hopefully not. But uh, whatever my next camera is going to be at some point, I hope I get the same enjoyment for the at least another 20 years with a, another great camera. So when you get a great camera, hang on to it, even if it, you know, goes down in value. Uh, because there's other things that are special about it. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Have yourselves a great day.